say you brought your son with you today. Maverick, would you be willing to come on? Come on over. Dripping with swag. What's one way, one word that would be used to describe him? Probably love. Why that one? Because he's a good dad and I love him. That's what it's, that's what it's all about, man. What were some lessons that you learned from your own father that helped you become the man that you are today? My real dad, there is no relationship. Uh, when I was eight years old, I, I was playing baseball. And funny enough, uh, my coach started dating my mom. Um, so he's been in my life since I was eight. He has been probably, you know, the greatest example in my life of, <clears throat> of what a man should be. Um, he's, he's a good man. Rio, welcome to the roller coaster. Appreciate it. Excited to have you on, man. Thanks. I'm excited as well. I appreciate you, uh, appreciate you coming out. I think the audience is going to find you and your story and, you know, really your purpose, mm -hmm. which I don't fully know, but I'm starting to understand. I think they're going to find it very meaningful. So, you know, one thing that I challenge guests on often is in introducing themselves. Most guests, they tend to introduce themselves by what they've done or what they do. Okay. So I'm going to give you the opportunity to share what you've done and what you do, but then I'm going to ask you to reintroduce yourself as who you are. Okay. Your identity. So what have you, what have you done, Rio? Let's get that out of our systems. Who are you? What do you do? All right. So uh, small town, mining town boy, um, grew up there, had a drive to do more, found, uh, owned my first business, which was a FedEx ground route uh, when I was 21 years old. Um, did good with that. Uh, didn't know how to run a business or, or, or use money at all. Never had that financial education. Um, so I lost that uh, around when I was 24. Um, shortly after that, I found my knack for marketing. I just, I was always a creative guy, loved, loved marketing, um, dove into that, um, had a marketing agency, did very well with that um, from there. And I'm kind of just speeding through this. But from yeah. there, I, I got into e-commerce. Um, that was kind of the shiny object at that time. And um, I did really well, really fast. And thankfully, I was a little bit older at that time. And I, I had the wherewithal to um, use that money properly, invest it. You know, I had at least a little bit of financial education at the time. And um, I used that to invest in, in a few more companies and basically leads us up to now where <clears throat> We own, we are a licensed public adjust, adjuster in the state of Arizona. Most people don't know what that is. We basically just help homeowners fight their insurance to get new roofs, basically. Um, along with that, we are a, a licensed contractor. We do roofing as well. Um, and then we're a solar company. We found that combining those three together was kind of the unique powerhouse that nobody else had. Yeah. And um, it, it's kind of the sauce, if you will. And uh, because of that, that, that led us to um, actually yesterday finalizing a merger with a, a company that, that was a little larger than us um, because they saw the power of what we're doing. And um, so yeah, that, that completed yesterday and now we'll be in four states. And uh, yeah, I do a little real estate, but that's about it. Amazing. Doesn't that feel good to get that out of your system? Now, it does. And now we don't have to talk about it that does. anymore. It does. There we go. Um, Amazing though. And, and I do, I don't want to take that lightly, like very accomplished guy professionally. I, I always have a ton of respect for entrepreneurs who are willing to be bold and go after opportunities and yeah. grind their faces off for a long time. And, you know, most people don't understand what it probably took to get to yesterday. Right. So congrats. Sure. Um, now let's talk about who you are. Okay. I want you to really dig on this one. I want okay. you to, I want you to answer this from the heart. Like who, who is Rio Osorio at your core? First, first time I've been asked this, I don't, the, the one thing I think, um, and it's probably a downfall of mine, but I try to be a, a tough guy and, uh, I'm really not at all. Yeah. And, uh, 
who who am I? I'll make I, you less tough on this show because that's what we I've, do. I've seen that. I've that's seen that you do that. And uh, that's why I was a little nervous to come on here. But, uh, uh, I mean, I'm a dad. That's, that's who I am. And, uh, you know, I had a very hardworking uh, single mom growing up. Um, but she was gone a lot because she had to work because somebody had to provide for us. So, you know, I kind of had, uh, I mean, from very young, which seems weird now in the, in the, uh, world that we live in now, but I mean, I can remember five years old running the streets with a lot of older kids, just, um, you know, out and about all day gone. And, uh, it, it seemed normal at the time. Now it's like, I, I would never do that or I'd never allow my kids to do that. But, um, yeah, I mean, my my dad kind of bounced out before before I was born, um, and I think that's a lot of what kind of gave me the chip on my shoulder to to want more as well. Like you know, I always I think I was naturally good at sports, naturally good at, at, at just pretty much anything I did that I put my mind to, but I had that extra driver. Because it's like, I'm going to prove like you screwed up for not being around. I'm going to show you like that, you know, I'm worthy of that. So that was a big driver in my life. And I think we, we need those things uh, throughout our life. That's not nearly or really any bit of driver anymore uh, for me. And now, now it's mostly my kids and, uh, and my wife and kind of just showing them, showing them the path of you know you can get and do whatever you want if you're willing to to put in the work and those are things that you know every night before we go to bed um you know i I tell my kids you know um just these affirmations and just brainwashing it into their head and um that's that's very important to me now we're talking now we're talking um what does it mean to you to be a father What does it mean to father? Um, I mean, really, I think it's something that's important to me. Well, first of all, I'm still learning every day. Uh, and, and, and learning and getting better every day is very important to me. Um, but I, I think it's, it's the leadership. And that's important to me on my personal life and my professional life. You know, I deal with a lot of 20 something kids, um, that work, work for us. And, um, it's important for me to be that example for them to see, um, so that they can become good humans and, uh, and hard workers. And, you know, so those are, there's those things that I think about every day. Um, thankfully I come from that blue collar world, um, that gave me my work ethic, but it's like, you know, I want to show these guys, this is what hard work looks like. This is what being a good person looks like this is what being a good man looks like um you know and it, a lot of that is you know is doing the right thing even when it's tough and i think we've lost that in this world like you know people are willing to do just whatever's easiest and you know same thing again every night like is it you know being a leader and is it going to always be easy to make the right decision and you know i, I tell them that and they know no, it's not, but you still got to do it. You still got to do the right thing. And, um, so yeah, I was listening to, um, I was listening back to an episode that I did recently with a guy named Justin Prince who wrote a book called be the one. Yeah, I know. And it's, it's amazing. And one of the things that he shared was he said something like the ultimate sign of a man is when their behavior is the same regardless of who's watching. I agree with that. Right? And this is something that I genuinely, I struggle with a little bit, right? Like, when nobody's watching, am I the same person as when I'm in the public eye? And I I want to get to a place where it's a one-to-one match. It's exactly the same. Yeah. And I think I totally agree with that. It feels like, especially for your kids or when you're leading teams or other men, right? It's like, it's like, how big of a hypocrite are we if we show up one way for them, but behind closed doors we're somebody else, right? Even if it's a slight variation, even if it's not a radical difference, right? 
Uh, so one of my big goals for 2024 is, is that, is to be the exact same regardless of who's watching. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, I mean, I couldn't agree more. Um, it, it's, it's a crazy thing to me that um, it, it is. I, I don't fully understand it, but it, it somehow is easier to be, I mean, even down to just say kind to, to outside people. But it's somehow so easy with your family to be rude or to be a jerk or whatever. And, yeah. you know, these are things that I, uh, I definitely struggle with. Um, most of my life, I've struggled with, with anger and I've had to work through those things. And, and I've come a long way. I've done, I've put a lot of time and effort into that, but you know, it's, it's, it's still, there's still things there where maybe it's not anger, but it's just being rude or, or snapping or snapping at my wife or, or saying something. And that to me, um, you know, and every time it happens, it's just like, that's unacceptable. Like that's unacceptable for my kids to see that that's, um, it's not okay. And it's this, constant battle within myself to you know it's like you have to put in the work you're not you're not there yet and uh there's still a lot of work to do internally um and you know i'd like to say that uh i'm, I'm definitely putting forth a, a very big effort to make that happen because you know as i said kind of right before we jumped on it's like i'm in this phase of of legacy and you know, I want to teach my kids and uh, show them the path and the way um, to get everything they want in life in all areas of their life, mm. you know, personal, spiritual, physical, um, everything. And uh, I can't remember who said this, maybe, maybe it was Ed Milet, but it was like, uh, uh, kids, it, it, what is it? Things are caught, not taught. And... Mm. That yeah, I was literally just talking to my wife about this on on the on the way here, and it was, it's like I'm good at teaching my kids what to do, what not to do, but am I? Are they catching me doing the same? In and, the end, um, yeah, yeah, and and I know that that's the only thing that's going to actually grab hold is is them catching me doing it, it coming from me, not just me. Hey, do this, do this, do this. It's not going to be the same. It's not, it's not going to stick. So. Yeah, that's a massive, um, and you know, probably the most important thing going on in my life right now is is that. It's beautifully said. I mean, I that's a great theme that we've been talking about a lot lately, and I think it's Saint Marcus Assisi. I, I believe is the name of the priest from a couple of thousand years ago who who talked about you know teach love, teach compassion, teach kindness, teach humility, and if it's necessary, use words. <laughs> right. I like that. And the whole idea is just, is, is what you said, is, is to be caught in the act. You know, if, uh, I mean, one, one, one way that I know that you deeply care about this topic, say you brought your son with you today, Maverick. He's sitting right here. Thanks for being here, Maverick. If you had to choose one word that Maverick would describe you as, as a father, Today, in in your current form, what would that work be? Um. Well, I I hope it would be love. I hope that's what it would be. Uh, I do my best every day to to show that and and say that, show it and say it, which you know both are important. But um, that's what I hope. I think words are, words are incredibly powerful as well, right? There's a, another thing I was taught by Justin, and this is all fresh because I just listened to the episode right before this, was the power of, specifically for ourselves, speaking words out loud versus having a thought. For example, me looking at myself in the mirror and saying, you're amazing, you got this, go do it, man, versus just thinking it, is 40 times more powerful than having a thought. Same goes for negative talk right. to ourselves, but it's actually 70 times more, right? So it's significantly more. Maverick, would you be willing to come on? Come on over. Sit on your dad's lap. 
This guy is dripping with swag. He's got the Nikes on. <laughs> All right, so Maverick, I want to ask you a question. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna turn the mic over to you. I asked your dad, "What's one way, one word that would be used to describe him?" He said, "Love." What's the one word that you would have chosen? Mm. Yeah, probably love. Yeah. Why that one? Because mm, he's a good dad and I love him. It's amazing. What does he do that makes you know that he loves you? Mm. Oh, he says a lot and he helps me through hard moments. Yeah. It's amazing. What's, what's one word um, that you think your dad would use to describe you? Like funny or something? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good word. You have any jokes? <laughs> You're just always on point. You're just always funny. Mm -hmm. Kind of, yeah. yeah. I can tell that. That's awesome, man. Well, thanks for thanks for joining us for a minute. Uh -huh. You can go sit back down. What a guy. <laughs> That's uh. Yeah, he is. That's what it's that's what it's all about, man. What were some lessons that that you know maybe to stay on this topic that you learned from your own father that helped you become the man that you are today? And maybe describe your relationship with him. Well, my real dad there is no relationship. Um but I would say that uh, when I was eight years old, um, I, uh, I guess that would be, no, I, I was playing baseball and <laughs> funny enough, uh, my coach started dating my mom during that time. And, uh, you know, it wasn't honestly too much longer after that, um, we moved in with, with him and, and they got married. Um, so he's been in my life since I was eight. Uh, and while I would say that in probably 99% of the ways, we are nothing alike, nothing at all. Um, I, I, he has been probably, I mean, I, absolutely the you know the greatest example in my life of <clears throat> of what a man should be. so um he's he's a good man and uh him and my mom been together for a long time and he's uh a great example of of what uh, a man and a husband should be so uh uh, I am, I'm definitely a hard ass dude and, and shouldn't, and probably where I know I don't show that, that stuff enough. Um, but, uh, yeah, he's, he's a great example of what a man should be. And, um, I, I mean, I couldn't be more fit, thankful that, that he showed up in my life. You know, what, what are some things that you caught him doing that make you feel these feelings about him? I mean, I, I guess the first thing would be, would be patient. He's, he's an ultimately patient person and extremely, extremely slow to anger. And I was always extremely fast to anger. It was the first thing I, I turned towards. Um, so, you know, getting to see that and especially, you know, as I've gotten older and I think that's helped me gain the balance in my life and kind of recognize in those times when like, I'm, I'm just ready to snap. Um, you know, I think there was those times where I was able to see and think about those things. And, um, you know, it's probably saved me from some bad decisions a few times. Um, the other thing I would say is just, 
the way he treats my mom. I mean, you know, he out, outside of God, he puts her first and like, no matter what, first over us kids, first over every, like she is first out, outside of God. And, um, that is, that's a very hard thing to do. Um, you know, relationships with women I have, have been tough with me in my life. And, you know, like I said, it's, it's easy to be a jerk sometimes to your wife. Um, so that, that has been, um, he, or he's been the greatest example of, you know, of how, how to treat your wife. And, um, and I, and I need that. I need it every day. And, uh, I've learned so much from him on that. And, uh, you know, I haven't had the best relationship with my mom and, uh, I think he's kind of been able, been there and been able to kind of bridge, bridge the gap and, um, to keep our family close and together. Yeah. You know, you've gotten to a place in your life where you've had some really good, you know, business and, and financial success. And now you're at a place where, um, you know, I think you're, probably shifting your mindset to focusing on what I would call the right things, right? And, and again, not to diminish that for everybody listening, it's very important that you make money, that you provide. And uh, one of the most important things you can do you know, as a man or, or a woman in, in certain cases. Um, but what would you say now, like you've gotten to this place in your career, you know, we've talked a lot about being a father, but what would you say, how old are you now? 42. Okay. Say you're halfway through life, roughly. Sure. Math would say something like that. Halfway through your life, what's your purpose now? What are you, what are you living for moving forward? Well, I mean, I, there's, there, there's a lot to that. I mean, to me, it's not just because overall, I would say, um, you know, I'm a Christian dude and, and God is very important to me and, and continuing to grow that relationship is extremely important to me. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and again, so that my children can, can see that, um, you know, it's, it's not enough to just tell them. You know, I, I need them to see that. And I mean, it's almost the same thing as, as bringing my son Maverick today. It's like, you know, I was talking to my wife and I'm like, he, he needs to see me and who his dad is outside of just at home. And, um, it's the same thing. He, he needs to see, uh, my relationship with God and, uh, so that he can, he can learn from that and, and grow from that and, and in turn build his own relationship. So that's very important to me. And that's very important to me in all aspects of my life. And again, I've, I've had this past year, um, I've got to be a part of, uh, four, four different young men, you know, building their relationship with, with Jesus. And, uh, that was, I mean, that, that meant everything to me. Um, and I've all, I was always guy. And again, I, not to, bash my mom or anything but uh she was you know grew up baptist and uh she was more just like beat it into you i'm gonna force it into you uh you don't go to church on sunday you're grounded and you know that was hard being a, a young kid and so for me i got to uh, what i took from that what i learned from that is just to be i'm not gonna force anything on anybody i'm not you know i'm just gonna be an example and, and hopefully a good enough example that, that I have some people being like, like, like what's different about this guy? Like, what's he doing different? And, um, thankfully that's worked in, in a few occasions and, um, it, and it's led to that. So that is, is very important to me. And, you know, the same obviously with my children and, um, it's that it's family, uh, teaching my kids helping them to learn, 
you know, how to be financially independent. Um, that's important because I, I don't want my kids to struggle, but I, I also don't want to make everything easy on them. You know, I, I want them to learn how to, how to work and, and put in the work because that to me was the journey of where I've gotten was the most special thing about it. And, uh, so that, yeah, that's, that's very important. But I also, I don't want to, you know, take away or act like, you know, my professional life, like I love what I do. Yeah. I love it. Uh, I get it. Nobody has to, no alarm has to wake me up every morning. I'm, I'm just up. I'm up at four every morning and uh, I'm excited to get up and get my day started. I'm excited to do big things and learn and grow and build. And, um, so, you know, I, I don't want to take anything away from that. That is important. I, I think that's important for a man, kind of like you said, to, to be a provider and to feel um, <clears throat> strong in that position in their life. You know, I think we've lost that a, a lot and, uh, in the world we live in today. But I think it's an important, important thing because, you know, I do see a lot of men out there who aren't, aren't providing or aren't. I don't want to say put in the position, but, um, and, and I just see it, how it's affected them and, um, you know, depressed and just not feeling fulfilled in, in their manhood. And, um, that I, I, w I would hate to feel that. So I, I think that's important, but I mean, so all, all three of those things are, are, are very important to me. I mean, if I was to, you know, have to, choose one um you know definitely god is first in my life and then family and uh amazing well said Thank you to our sponsors over at Bucked Up. I love this company. I love their products, their apparel, and their supplements. Recently, they dropped the mother of all pre-workouts, Mother Bucker. This is not for the faint of heart. This will make you want to claw your face off. So don't get stuck in traffic when you're headed to the gym. I love these guys. I love this company, and I love their products. They are clearly the best tasting pre-workout on the entire market, and they're number one for a reason. Bucked Up is my favorite workout brand, hands down, and they also have my favorite apparel for working out and just for daily life. It's Lululemon-like quality, but for a fraction of the price, that's affordable. So head over to their site, buckedup.com, where you can check it out, and for 20% off their entire site, use the code TylerHall20. So Rio, one of the, one of the things that you just described, um, you know, and one of the things that we talked about at the very beginning, is separating your identity, you know, from what you've done or what you do, right? And I think way too often as men, when we're introduced to somebody new, the first thing that we do is we say, you know, I'm Tyler, I'm a tech guy, I built a company, I did a thing, I made some money, I did, you know, I did a podcast, I do a thing. And it's like, yeah, yeah but who, like, for me now, it's like, yeah, but who are you? Like, like truly right i don't and so i i came up with this concept that's called the im statement 
and you might call it a personal mission statement. You might call it a personal creed. Um, I'd like to read it to you if that's okay. And I challenge you to go home and to work on this. And by, by the turn of the year, I'd love to see you have this done. And I'm trying to memorize it still because I just, I've kind of worked through it. And, and I, I think this is meant to be somewhat of an ever evolving sure. thing. Um, but maybe this will provide a little bit of inspiration for you. And I think this is in order a little bit as well. So you'll, you'll hear that. I'm a child of God with potential beyond human imagination. A father of four sacred children and a husband to a loving wife. I am a machine. My habits and routines can't be broken. I'm a man of my word. I do what I say I'm going to do. A doer. Watch my feet, not my lips. A long game player, not distracted by instant gratification. An acceptor of people, my ability to judge does not exist. I don't take things personally because I know who I am. Full of love for my fellow man. A calm and kind man, but not to be taken lightly. My sword is sheathed and will only be used if absolutely necessary. Called to change the lives of millions of men through my example. That's powerful. I feel like I, feel like I wrote that. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. It's awesome. So I'll send it to you. And that's one thing I've, I've talked about it a little bit. I haven't been super public about this yet, but uh, I'm building a men's coaching community next year. And um, one of the first kind of foundational things in our program is that is really like working on our identity. Like who, yeah. who are we truly? Right. Um, so that'll be, that'll be kind of one of those, one of the very first exercises that we do. Yeah. That's a hard thing to do. Um, I think I'm in that yeah. arena right now. Yeah. With my kids as well. That's something. So I, I had my wife get, a uh, bunch of vision boards. We're all going up to up North for, for Christmas and, uh, vision boards and then kind of just up whatever, a paper or whatever that we can do the vision stuff, but also write out, you know, why it's cool that, you know, you want a million dollars, you want a million dollar house, you want this, you want that, but why, why do you want it? Yeah. You know, and when you, and it, you know, like Jim Rohn said, when you figure out the why, the how becomes easy. Yes. So yep. that's, uh, I love that again. I appreciate that. I want to circle back to, you know, something that clearly you care deeply about. I think it's the number one, you know, priority on your list, which is your relationship with God. I want to, I don't want to assume that I know what you mean when you say that. And I'd like to unpack that a little bit. Who is God to you? And what do you do to strengthen and further develop your relationship with him? Who is God? Um, I mean... God is everything. God is, um, for me, it's, uh, again, and, you know, my dad chose not to be around from, from a young age. Um, and there was always, you know, I, I had that gap to fill. And, you know, thankfully, again, you know, my mom was kind of extreme with, with what she did when I was young, but you know, I got to go to church and, and learn about that and, <clears throat> and see those things. So I created a relationship with God from a very young age. And I think that's what kind of took me through, um, a lot of hard moments. And, you know, when my dad's not around and it's almost having this conversation, you know, prayer, I guess you would call it. Um, and again, even though my stepdad came in when I was eight, great man, wonderful man, but again, we're, you know, we're not very much alike. So, um, I've had a very strong relationship with God for a long time. And what I've realized very recently is, you know, a lot of what I've been through in my life and, 
continued after getting kicked in the teeth, kicked in the teeth, like 20 years of, of doing this. And, uh, is that, you know, if I really broke it down and thought about it more deeply, it was like, I, I just had ultimate faith in God. I just had ultimate faith that he had a bigger plan for me and that there was bigger things going to happen for me, but it was going to be on his time when he thought I was ready. And, um, so yeah, God, I mean, God is, is everything to me. And, uh, yeah, I forget the second half of that question. How do you strengthen your relationship with him? What things do you do? It's, it's definitely through, through prayer. Um, you know, we pray every night as a family and, uh, I definitely need to get better at, you know, having some time with my wife and, and prayer with her. And I think that's kind of something we're working on. Um, you know, anybody who's done that or started that could, it's a little awkward, um, for whatever reason, but, um, yeah, well, I mean, we, we pray every night together as a family and, uh, you know, we're at church every Sunday and just, just continually building that relationship. Um, usually, uh, like I said, I wake up four o'clock every morning. Um, head to the gym. I, for whatever reason, don't ask me why my gym's about 35 minutes from my house when there's 17 other ones on the way. <laughs> but, um, you know, I, I always put on a, a sermon or some Christian music, uh, during that time to just, you know, take it in and continue learning and, and growing and hearing the stories. And, um, I think that's, that's how I build a relationship. That's cool. You feel like you have to go to church on sunday to have a relationship with god i don't i don't at all um but for me i do yeah it's it's like my reset it's my i i don't i rarely i will rarely ever slow down i just don't have a slow down i i, I don't want to say i can't because i don't believe in that word but I just go, go, go. I'm constant and, you know, I'm, I'm very driven and that is my time that everything's put away. There's no phone, there's no nothing. And, and I can just really, um, what's the word? Just, just soak it all in and, and be there in, in a good place. And, and so, yeah, I need that, but do I feel like you have to? Absolutely not. Yeah. I want to talk about a couple of things that you've said, okay? And some of these are recent. Some of them are older. So some of them you may say, I don't even remember ever saying that. Okay. But you did say them, okay? And I'd love to just have you expound on some of these things. Okay, the first quote that you said is you said that strong men understand that true leadership lies not in domination, but in empowering others. They inspire, motivate and bring out the best in their teams. What did you mean by that? So I came from, again, uh, you know, my, well, not my first job, but I mean, one of my first few jobs, very young, was in the mines and uh, in the copper mines in, in Globe, Arizona. And that is a world of just manly men, if you want to call it that. And you know, if, if you're not going to do something, you're, I, I won't say the words, but, you know, it, it's just grinding you down. And, and that's kind of my first, again, I'm not even going to call that leadership, but that's my first kind of exposure to what that looks like. And I think in, in everything I've ever done, um, because I'm, I'm just extremely driven, I've moved up very fast. And, you know, I think my first experience being in a leadership position, um, it came that's kind of what it came from was learning from that and you know just kind of being that that dominant like you're going to do what i say or you're fired type of thing and and i i'd like to think i'm i'm a smart guy and i i i watch people and how they react i watch body language and and i just caught very soon that it's like this, this isn't working that that doesn't work uh you know they they just and it never worked for me which is odd so but i, I you know i I started doing that. So, you know, being that dominant thing and it, it just doesn't work. And I wanted to be, again, I wanted to be the leader that led by example. You know, I wanted people to catch me leading well and not, um, 
you know, not just have me. Uh, and when, when nobody's watching, and I've, heard, I've had some of my guys, you know, where, when I thought nobody was watching, you know, they caught some things that I was saying or doing or whatever. And um, that affects people so much more. And, you know, I think it's also as I've built my relationship with, with God and, you know, it, I just knew that being this dominant, which I was very prone to, that is, I am, you know, kind of what hit me with your, uh, whatever you want to call it, your statement, your I am thing, um, which I really believe in. It's like, which I've had to learn and, and, and build this because my, I, you know, my, my instant reaction is usually anger. And uh, I've had to learn how to be calm and be gentle. But it's also, if, if you mess with my people, if you mess with my family, I'll tear you to pieces. Yeah. And uh, I think that's very important for, for a man to have. Um, but yeah, I... It, 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 in the end, it just came from observing, observing how people reacted to me in the different ways that I would lead and do things. And, you know, it's important for me to, to build long relationships. And, and I saw that you don't do that when you're trying to dominate people. And, um, so yeah, I don't know if that was a very clear answer. Yeah. In 2020, you said... Are you willing to consider your life is where it is because of a limiting belief you still have that are holding you back from your true potential? Limiting beliefs, I think, are something that are pertinent in probably every human being's life to an extent. I think they're also widely either misunderstood or just not being contemplated at all, right? Where we just think this just is what it is. This is just not possible. We don't even recognize that these are limiting beliefs. I've come to the conclusion that nothing is impossible now, but it's taken a lot of time and a lot of failure and a lot of experiences and some success to realize like, oh, you can actually pretty much do anything, right? So why did you say that? And what's your, you know, what is your belief on limiting beliefs that hold us back? Well, I, I agree with you. I, I think it's it's innately in all of us. I think it's built into us normally from a very young age, whether it's our parents trying to protect us um, or in a school setting. Um, these things are just kind of built into us. And I am very conscious of that stuff now and what's, what's getting put into my children's head and and, and even from me yeah. um, and catching myself or even from my wife, um, because, yeah, we do have innately in us these limiting beliefs. And I, I'm with you where I do believe anything is possible. I can achieve anything I've seen. It's all, I call it like some of the things that have happened in my life. It's like I call it almost like, uh, like, like a crack in the matrix. Like it's just <laughs> like, wait, what? Like there were. One of my earliest um, memories in in Globe, which just happens to be, if anybody's been through there, um, it's a good supercar route because there's a lot of canyons and stuff to get there and then getting out of there. Same thing. And one of my earliest memories is uh, seeing some Lamborghinis drive through. I was probably five, maybe somewhere around there. And I don't know why, but it, it just affected me. I'm just like, like wow like i i want to have that um i just thought it was so cool and you know again i was married the day after my 18th birthday i had three daughters with her and my middle girl was kind of my tomboy um she she hung with me on on everything and so in my mind and it's funny you know how god works it's like you know it's it's not our timing it's it's his and um i had seen i'm like i'm I'm going to have that. And, and, I'm, and I saw myself, literally dreamed it, saw it um, driving in a supercar with, with my daughter next to me. And um, that did happen, but not in that order. It was 
a lot longer <laughs> away than it took, but I, I sold it now, but a few years ago I had a McLaren and, um, you know, and I, I didn't know how, it, how it would affect me. I didn't even know it was going to happen to be honest, but, um, he had a boxing class and that was his first time in it. And we, he jumped in it and we went to his boxing class and, uh, I'm just like looking at him as I'm driving and I'm like, like I've seen this, like I've seen this before. You know, maybe it was, I thought it was going to be my daughter at the time, but I've seen this moment and now it's happened. And it's those moments when it's just like anything is possible. Yeah. I know I can do anything that I put my mind to. Like I'm a small town boy. I come from nothing. Like I lived in a shack and, uh, so limiting beliefs to me, and this is one where it's, it's almost two where I, you know, I have to watch myself and be patient with other people, specifically my wife, as she's learning and growing and understanding what these limiting beliefs are, because it's like, I'm, I'm trying to force them, tell her like, no, trust me, like you could do it. But she does still have some of those things where it's just in her. She doesn't even know it's in her. And, and then she comes from, you know, the way she thinks is just like, this is just who I am. And I'm just like, no, no, it is not. That's just who you choose to be yeah. right now. And if you could let yourself believe and what I've had to learn with limiting beliefs is maybe, maybe I have to guide or push down another road. That's more, um, more native to whoever I'm dealing with, with my wife. It's, um, she's a runner. She, she runs long distances. Like when it comes to that, like she'll do anything and, or, or just challenging herself. So I'm like, I know I can get to this if I can start here and just get her to start seeing it and believing it. And in the past couple of years, she's done some really cool stuff. She, she swam, um, she swam, uh, what we call the San Francisco Bay, uh, two miles in that freezing choppy shark infested water and uh you know i didn't want her to but she needed to do that she needed to see what she was capable capable of and she did it and i could see like just again a little crack in the matrix in her eye when when she got done with that like i did it like i did it like i can do anything yeah. and then it's just been compounding ever since and uh last last weekend um she did a 50 mile race um mcdowell mountain frenzy and uh, that was the longest that she's ever uh, ran, and, and she, she crushed it. And part of it was up McDowell Mountain, which is like, oh, yeah. That Steve is wow. nasty. So, um, yeah, like I am just a strong believer in breaking down these limiting beliefs. And um, it's, it's, it's such an important thing to me with my kids as well. And, and again, like I, I do. I take every chance I get to brainwash them into yeah. to, to believing anything could be done. And uh, I've, I've got to see that a few times so far with different kids, like see them achieve something and like, wow, like, yeah. I did it. So um, again, I don't know if that necessarily answered the question, but. Um, no, it's beautiful. There's, yeah. um, I mentioned you briefly, I'm, I'm building a men's coaching community. And, you know, one of the things that, um, uh, that my partner and I do on a monthly basis is we do, you know, these sort of seemingly impossible challenges. And usually they have some kind of physical and mental, mentally grueling, you know, activities or exercises that you go through. And so, for example, we, one of them, we ran one mile every hour on the hour for 24 hours straight. Wow. Right. And you might go, oh, it's 24 miles. One, like, not a big deal, but you don't think about like, how do you maintain your gut through that? How do you get sleep? Do you get sleep? Sleep deprivation. Yeah. Um, the, the warm up and cool down effect 24 times, right? In such yeah. a condensed amount of time. Brutal, but it's like you do these things. And then once you do that, you realize like, okay, I've done that. So now my ceiling is like way up here or not even my ceiling. My, my baseline is yeah. higher, right? We did this one called the Day of Chaos, which was just literally like 12 hours of just straight insanity, like 
mental mind exercises and physical feats and all kinds of stuff. And so with our men's coaching group, a lot of men just, they they never have these opportunities to put their bodies and their minds through strain. They just get into, we get into these ruts and we go to work and then we come home and we do dinner and we go to sleep and we wake up and we do the same thing. And you Mm -hmm. get into these, these funks and that's where limiting beliefs creep in because your baseline is so low. And so you go, well, my baseline's here. How am I ever going to get to here? Mm -hmm. And so I think one of the main things that we can provide these men is just, we're going to go out and we're going to do some things that are very difficult and we're going to raise your floor and we're going to keep raising your floor to where eventually you'll get to a place mentally where you say, dude, I've done all this incredibly hard shit. I can do anything. Right. Yeah. So, um, you talked about uh, one of the other things you said is you said build a better mousetrap and the world will beat a path to your door um, you know this is the constant debate of like better product versus better sales versus better marketing etc right um, this to me says better product. However, I think you are kind of a sales master, right? And you build sales teams. So what, what did you mean by this quote? Well, I, I guess I'll use the example of, um, of three of my businesses right now. So like I'd mentioned to you, we're, we're a licensed public adjuster. Uh, we're a roofing company. And a, and a solar company. So, and this wasn't my idea, just by the way. It was, it was my partner's idea, which was genius. But, um, but it worked. And it, again, that's, this is literally what is probably the biggest, um, the biggest part of why another larger company wanted to, to bring us in with them. So we had our, roofing company slash public adjusting company we had our our sales guys our door-to-door guys and we had a roofing company completely separate um we would send out our guys every day hitting the doors and what we saw is when they came back it's that on the roofing side public adjusting side because again we're we're knocking the door and it's like hey let us help you uh, fix your damaged roof. We see some damage up there. We'll ha- have your insurance cover it for you, minus your deductible. Um, the the rate at which we were getting to actually go sit with these customers was just, I think, three four x higher than it was when we were getting. Hey, we're here for solar. We want to charge you, yeah. you know, uh, sixty thousand dollars, forty thousand dollars, whatever it is. Even though technically it's going to save you money. Um, you know, getting the door slammed in your face, just a, a lot harder. So again, my partner's idea, he's like, why don't we combine these things? Why don't we start, knock the door for the roofing side? That gets us in there. Now we helped them get a new roof. Now they know us, like us, and trust us. And then when we go into basically the color appointment, they get to pick out the colors of the roof. Um, oh, hey, by the way, we also have solar. Yeah. And we can wrap your deductible into the solar financing. You're zero out of pocket. You get to save money now um, on your utility bill and you get a new roof. I mean, can't beat it. And when we took us a minute to dial it in, but when we got it, we just took off. I mean, we just took off. So that is an example of building a better mousetrap. We see all these other guys out there, uh, solar companies, if you will, knock on the door for that. And And given there's some really great ones, absolutely, that do really well. But um, what we did and and looked at for industry average, I mean, we were just bar none, smoking them, just smoking them. So that caught the eye of another company and they wanted to bring us in. Like I said, that finalized yesterday. And now um, as of January 1, we'll be in four states and we have a plan to exit in 2026. Not to belabor this point, but, you know, when I think about mousetrap, okay, I think about like, if you're a solar company, how do you build a better solar company? The thing that you did was almost like you built a mousetrap and a 
scorpion trap and a right. rat trap. You know, you built like three different ones and you combine them into one trap. Right. And so it was sort of like these combined different offerings were actually sitting inside of a friend of mine's office called Green Mango, which is a pest control business. Yep. But the parent entity is called Hype Farm and they have a cleaning company and they have pools and they have solar. So they have these home services businesses that they've wrapped yeah. in and very similar model to you guys. So I think it's amazing. I, I want to wrap on this one. You, one of your unique original perspectives is the focus principle. Okay. So it's follow one course until success. And I'm a, I'm a massive proponent of this. You know, I coach four, four or five CEOs of companies sort of 10 to hundred million in revenue. And companies at that stage, they tend to start to become, they start to explore, they start to want to expand. Hey, we feel like we've right. done enough here. What are the adjacent offerings that we can build or different products? Um, I'm constantly trying to say, look, we've only got 2% of this market. There is so much more yeah. potential. Let's just stay focused on this, right? Why, why do you think focus is so important? Maybe not just in business, but also in relationships and health and mindset and things like that. Well, I mean, I think that we can uh, get off track. Uh, it, it's so easy to get off track. I mean, it's so easy to, you know, especially now with social media, shiny objects, like it, it's, and, you know, we've both seen it a hundred times. I mean, someone's like posting on their social media, oh, yeah, I'm all in on this. And then, Six months later, they're all in on this, and uh, they've never made money at any of them. And uh, one of my good friends and partners is is like, you know, everyone talks about seven streams of income to be rich or whatever, but he's like, most people have seven trickles of income, and it's like you you do you half ass at all of them, and you make just a little bit at all of them, and but most of the time you make nothing at any of them um, because you're moving on. So I think it's very important to establish that one thing that you're great at start making uh you know a lot of money at it uh until you're comfortable and then to where you can start potentially investing in other things and and there's different ways to look at it for me it's i just started a, a another company um it's in the wholesaling space with with a cool little twist on it but it's like man i i we just did this merger there's going to be a you know a lot going on there a lot but it's like I started it, it was my brainchild, but I've, you know, I've, I've built my life up to be at a point financially and all that to where I started this. It's, it's my thing, but I can hire the people and yeah. put them in place who are going to do that. So it takes very little of my time yeah. at all. Um, so there's, there's different ways to look at it. But again, I couldn't, if I hadn't had built the one thing up first and, and made some money at it, I never would have been able to do that. Yeah. And, and I would probably be trying to manage everything right now and, and doing crappy at, at all of them. For sure. Um, I, and I guess the same thing would go along with, um, with relationships. Um, and I would say specifically, I, I guess, with my, my wife, it's like the one thing I've learned, um, you know, my two times being married, the one obviously I was very young and I had no idea what I was doing, but I learned that it's work. And if you don't focus and put in the work um, specifically, and I'm going to say this, but I'm still not great at it. We're working on it, but you know, it's important to spend that time with her. Yeah. It's important to have, um, you know, we try to do a, a date night on Wednesdays or we're, we're okay at it. We're not great at it, but that's important because it, you need that time together, especially with me, because I am go, go, go. I'm nonstop. And, you know, we need that time to decompress and just be like, I, I'm here with you right now. Yeah. Let's, let's spend that time together. Let's grow. Let's build our relationship, you know, so that it doesn't fall apart. Because if you don't put that time and effort and focus into it, things tend to fall apart. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, very, focusing is, is, is very important. And uh, again, that was, was my partner, uh, Jamala, who, who taught me that. Amazing. What's your final, maybe just piece of advice for our audience, right? I think it's, a, it's tough out there right now. I think 
a lot of people, including myself, including yourself, right? We, we, have, we have hard days. We have tough days. We have dark days. We fight trauma. We fight these demons all the time. What's your, what's your maybe last word of advice for people who are going through it right now? That, that it's going to be okay. Like, if you're having a hard time, just wait. It's going to be okay. Yeah. You know, and that doesn't mean wait, don't do nothing, don't put in the effort to, to try and, you know, fix or find solutions to things. But it just, it just means like, it, it's going to be okay. Like, we all go through hard times. Um, I've been through many. And if you just keep going, keep moving, keep doing, you know, whatever it is that you're, you're doing, whatever's on your mind, your heart, um, it's going to get better. I guarantee it. Brother, thank you. Thank you for coming on the roller coaster. Yeah, this was great. It's a pleasure. I appreciate it. Okay, that's thank a wrap. You.